In the previous episode, I showed you how to deploy Azure Data Factory in a way recommended by Microsoft, which is deployment from ADF Publish branch from ARM template. However, there is another way to build CD process for ADF, directly from JSON files, which represent all data factory objects. In this video, I will show you uh, the latter methods, building the entire process step by step, including the fact that we have multiple environments and therefore isolated services. Therefore, we need to manage all needed properties correctly. At the beginning, I would like to refer to my previous video of Azure Data Factory when I presented uh, how to deploy Azure Data Factory directly from ADF Publish branch. So that method, during that video, I've built uh, this build pipeline and it was nothing complicated here. Yeah? So I'm just publishing artifact and uh, simple one task. Uh, and my source is ADF publish branch, as I mentioned. Yeah? So let's have a look on this uh, publish branch, um, ADF publish branch in the repo. Uh, as you can see here, this is IDF publish branch and this is my code. So here we have ARM templates files. Okay, so in that way we published the IDF from that branch because we have we had uh, IDF, uh, we had a ARM templates. So my release pipeline was like that. Yeah, so simple one, Azure Resource Group deployment when, when I pointed my ARM template for factory. So two files, two ARM template files. One is the uh, main file and the second one is with parameters. And the other very important things was this field, this field uh, where I could control basically what parameters I would like to replace and overwrite um, in this parameter for factory. So in that way I could have ensure that I will replace uh, the values with appropriate parameters uh, per environment. As you can see here, yeah. So for UAT, I had specific uh, values, and obviously, if I would have more environments here, I can specify uh, distinct values uh, for them. So yeah, that was that approach. And when we have a look on the repo, on the Git repository here, my files, but to master branch, master branch and my Azure Data Factory is represented in a bit different way. This is the, the, the direct code. This is the code uh, in a form how Azure Data Factory is saved in the repository. So as you can see here, as I, I have only a few type of objects, which is data set, linked service and pipeline. Yeah, as you remember, we've created one simple pipeline to copy some files. Okay, so what is the challenge now? Our challenge now is to deploy this code, this Azure Data Factory, directly from this place, directly from a master branch and uh, reading all those objects uh, one by one and deploy all those objects into the target Azure Data Factory. So obviously we need to do this in a completely different way. So let's do this. So because I will be using completely different branch, I will be using a master branch right now, I need to create a completely new build pipeline. So I'm going to the pipelines and what I will do, I will I will just uh, duplicate and clone the existing one. Okay, so again I'm publishing artifact as a drop artifact name, 
Mm, and my path to publish would be that one, but like let's make sure that I'm using appropriate branch. In my case, this one, this time I would like to use master branch. Okay, so now let's make sure that we're using appropriate folder and because I have only one Azure Data Factor right now in this project, I'm using and publishing only this folder. Okay, so this is my build pipeline. So this is build pipeline CI from code. Okay, let's uh, save and queue it, which means save and run. Okay, in the meantime, uh, let's create a clone and duplicate the existing release pipeline from the previous uh, video. So my previous uh, release pipeline was that one. And let me create the clone of this. And we had only two tasks. Uh, we had Azure Data Factor instance deployment. Okay, I will leave it as is. And also we had this deployment of all object for Azure Data Factory using these ARM templates. Okay, so we are not interested to do this uh, right now because we have different way. So we are removing these uh, tasks and uh, for demo purposes and to speed up the process and demonstration, I will just disable this selected, uh, this first task, okay? What do we need to build right now? So uh, there's a, again, in this step, uh, there's a two um, way how to do that. The first one is uh, to build your own PowerShell script to deploy, to read all the files and deploy each of them uh, one by one. But also there's um, some uh, tasks uh, in the marketplace which you can lever leverage and uh, then uh, must quickly build this deployment task. Let's have a look. So let's have a look on our Azure Data Factory then. Refresh and let's check this. As you can see here, we have SQL Player UAT right now, which basically is the new uh, value from from variable from here. Okay, that's cool. That's very useful if you would like to, you know, uh, de uh, define all the variables, all the values in uh, this place. That was the second approach of deploying Azure Data Factory from the code. Is it better or easier than the previous one? I don't know, maybe. Both methods have their pros and cons. And for some reasons, I've seen the second method used in every company I work with. Which one would you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Tap a subscribe button down below or click thumb up if you like this video. And see you next time.